What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build. Today's build will be focusing on a fast paced and heated loadout that is suitable for any content where you're going to be facing a large group of enemies all at once. The build will heavily utilize the Frenzy Perk which you can get from the new Season of the Chosen Weapons, but I've also added in the Ashen Wake for its high impact damaging grenades, Elemental Wells for some burst energy in all of our abilities, and Bottom Tree Solar for pretty much enhancing everything on us while we stay on the move. This is a fast paced CQC build that will keep you on your toes and is incredibly fun once you realise how your perks and abilities in coordination can tear up all types of enemies. It's powerful in its own right which fills in on the magic and chaoticness of Destiny and the power fantasy behind it is nothing to laugh about. I also wanted to explore the Ashen Way exotic as a whole as I don't believe I created a build around them until now, and from past and current experimentation with the Zotic, I felt that they were lacking a synchronization with the current gear we had. With the introduction of Elemental Wells and the Frenzy Perk, I believe I found something that everyone would enjoy and could all agree on. Personally, if you love to play a fast, lethal and mobile player that's able to zip around and decimate enemies left, right and centre, while getting a wide number of benefits as you go then this build is definitely what you want, and if you tune in by, I'll show you how to achieve that. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I'll really appreciate a like and a sub, as it does go a long way for me. Starting off the subclass, we will be using the Code Siege Breaker for a supportive role based abilities, which seemed odd for a setup that we're focusing on, but this is where the subclass can actually fit in really well. Code of Siege Breaker focuses on utilising your sunspots to increase damage, ability regen and super duration, and when combined with exotics such as Hallowfire Heart, we can increase our ability regen even more and pretty much always be full on energy. With that in mind and how you use Light to Subclass Buff, you'll probably want to focus on a long to mid range setup that makes full use of the Sunspot's duration for your own benefits. However, this is not what we're going to be doing, as we want to stay on the move but also benefit from the Sunspots when made available. This is where the Ashen Wake exotic will come into play as it could turn our solar sticking grenades into impact grenades, and the difference plus benefits from it is large and amazing once used. With the effect of the exotic, every time we get a kill with a grenade, it will produce a sunspot for us to pass through, but also providing ability energy as well. At the same time, our exotic can provide grenade energy back from kills, which will vary at times on the amounts, and on top of that, we also have the Elemental Ordnance mod and Elemental World effects that can also kick in and give us a big 30 second boost to our abilities. In simple terms, we have created a mini Hallowfire Heart without the downside of needing to save our super for the benefits and this is great as the effects are instant. Of course, Code of the Devastator is another option to pick for its Roaring Flames perk and the Throwing Hammer perk. Using the Ashen Wake Exotic with that subclass can allow you to hit a lot more harder in both melee and grenades and will be a great choice for the setup in mind. However, the micromanagement involved with keeping these stacks up and going can be tiresome for what is currently being requested. I plan on using my weapons a lot for the setup to show you how well coordinated everything is, while the other option would focus mainly on ability only usage. It has its place, but I don't believe it will work with what I'm trying to achieve this time round. For weapons, we are aiming for a CQC build that will incorporate the craziness of large enemy engagements and allow us to keep us on our toes with everything in place. It's recommended we use a SMG with fast reload speed to benefit the movement of the build. Bonus points if you use a solar SMG for the elemental effects of elemental wells. My primary is the Extraordinary Rendition SMG with Overflow and Frenzy, and this is not only the best SMG to own, but also the best role to look for when grinding for one. This at first doesn't look all that great stat wise, with its lack of stability being a major problem for us console users. But once you get a good stability perk on the weapon, that's when the weapon becomes a bit more accurate and usable for all. But what really makes the weapon juicy is the perk called Frenzy which will increase your damage, handling and reload speed once you're in combat. And this perk on an aggressive frame SMG is probably one of the best seasonal weapons to own just for how well suited it fits the weapon type. Once Frenzy kicks in, the SMG becomes something else, but once you add in overload to the weapon as well, then you're really going to have some fun with it. 
I've been using this SMG a lot and it's definitely worth investing in for the sheer power it comes with. But firstly, you're going to need to grind out the engram to get the roll shown. For our secondary, I'm using the Devils of Ruin for its ability to stun unstoppables and nightfalls and to also maximise its effects via the elemental wells. As I for some reason don't have a secondary solar weapon that would best suit the build for its fast nature and elemental wells, I've chosen to go with the Devil's Ruin as the next best thing. Oddly enough, it does work with the build very well for its charge attack that can pawn some serious damage either on its own or empowered. With the Elemental Armors mod, we can increase the likelihood chance of creating wells as we go, which will be important with keeping our exotic in check and free flowing. If you have the Terror Bar SMG, you can use that instead for exotic trait, which is similar to a Frenzy but only for a limited duration. What would make Terror Bar better though is if its damage was a little bit more longer and perhaps maybe on the same level as Frenzy in terms of duration, but that might be a bit too overpowered, especially how powerful the SMG really is once you get the exotic trait going. Best thing for the time being is to stick with the Devil's Ruin or to look for another SMG, that's Solar, which I don't currently believe there is at the moment. For a Heavy, I've chosen to use the Commoration Heavy Machine Gun with Zen Moment and Firefly. Hard hitting and very smooth firing weapon that is great for taking on boss to elite based enemies, but also being helpful for taking on Void Shield enemies in Night Vault content. Although having a version with Reconstruction would have been great for extended ammo over time, Firefly is still just as good for clearing out large swarms of enemies in one go, who may be congested in one area. Your heavy won't play that much of a big role in your setup since we have our super, primary and secondary at hand, but it's always wise to have something that can be useful against both bosses and red bars just in case. Alternatively, the Semiseris Saw Machine Gun is also a fantastic weapon to use with its high base damage and good perk pool. That weapon can roll with Clown Cartridge which is great for randomly extending your weapon's magazine to always have more than what you need, and adding on some sort of damage buff can carry you a long way in the end game. For the stats, your grenades are your most viable item that you'll be relying on the most throughout the build, so this area will need to be just high enough so that you can passively gain energy over time when no enemies are around. From there, your intellect will come second because of the numerous effects that sunspots can produce and the DPS it can bring over time. And then after that, you then have free reign as to what you want to invest in further, but melee will most likely be your further investment because of the CQC element of the build. At 70 to 80, you're getting a 45 to 41 second cooldown for your discipline, which is enough to passively gain back grenade energy when you're not engaging in any sort of combat. Now, as the build focuses on the ability regen you gain from your subclass and elemental worlds as you play, this will sound very excessive to have, which you are correct on. We want to make sure is that we have plenty of grenades freely available so we can keep its effects going and at the same time use our sunspot to keep our movement on the go. The one issue you're going to come across is how your now impact grenades won't do enough damage on most ultras or major enemies unless they are already weakened, which can put you in a disadvantage of having no grenades freely available. If no sunspots or elemental worlds is around to passively regain your grenades, then we need another source to help us with this, and that's where the stat will come into play. Sometimes you'll get into a situation where you want to do damage to an enemy, but also back off and regain your ground again, and using your grenades are a great way of doing so. Having this stat as high as possible will allow you to at least circumvent the disadvantages our grenades have while still feeling worthwhile. Our intellect stat can be left at the 50 sections now, as if you're using the font of wisdom mod that provides a plus 50 to your base intellect stat, then that should be fine enough for you. If you don't plan on using the mod, then investing in 60 to 70 would be suitable as well, as we can utilize the orbs of powers that are dropped by us or our allies and quickly build up our super that way. Honestly, I would invest in the mod as its activation is very simple to achieve, its effects are very obvious to notice, and you'll be producing wells on very long basis, so it's not like you're not making full use of it while you play. We then have the strength stat and this can be adjusted to around the 50 to 60 levels as this area won't be used a lot but will still play a pivotal role in the creation of sunspots. Like I mentioned, as we are relying on creating sunspots, any sources that can produce them will be very helpful in the long run and this mini stat is one of them. It's great to use this charge ability if you're against a minor enemy as they tend to be one shot anyways. Against majors, 
they can be 50-50 depending on their health, which can be both useful if they are surrounded by minor enemies, as the sunspots created can damage or even outright kill those around it. Or it can be very risky, as you can lose a lot of health in a short amount of time for the effects to go into motion. Whatever the measure, using your charge melee will vary from combat to combat, and whether the risk outweighs the pros. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how will they overall affect the build. For head we have intellect and frontal wisdom mod, arm we have resilience, impact induction, overload smg and elemental armaments mod, chest we have discipline because of damage times 2 and frontal might mod, leg we have minor discipline, absolution, insulation and elemental orders mod, mark we have discipline, distribution and focus in lens mod. This is a build that I've been planning to do for a very long time, but felt that the original version I had wasn't good enough to show off for its worth. Before we had the new mods and perks introduced, the build was originally going to be focusing on just the military solar, with throwing hammer and making full use of the damage buff you get for a continuous boost in damage that would be considered borderline OP. It was nice and simple, but its usage in certain activities were limited and the cons to the setup was very high if you missed either your grenades or midi, as you had to then either build it back up with specific perks or you needed to wait and regain it over time. Once Frenzy and Elemental Wells were introduced, it allowed me to expand on the build and actually make it viable for all content, except for Grandmaster Nightfalls and to a degree PvP. With the setup, we won't be getting crazy numbers for our grenades damage over time, but the build will get continuous damage over time as long as enemies are around, and this is great for keeping you on your toes and decimating all types of enemies that are around us. The fun with the build is once you activate the Frenzy perk on your SMG, which will now hit a lot more harder than before and will reload really quickly, allowing you to switch between targets in quick succession. Once our Frenzy is in action, we can then use our grenades and melee to activate our sunspots for a further boost in damage in all areas, but also receive a buff to our passive ability regen over time. This is important as this will allow us to keep making sunspots on the fly via abilities or even weapons, and the more we have, the more stronger we become. While this is all happening, we are also gaining elemental wealth to drop that will give us around a 20% ability energy back, and then a further 30 second ability regen that can be refreshed as long as you keep creating more. This can create a chain reaction of ability spam on the go, without the use or even need of specific perks such as Demolitionist or Wellspring. In fact, with the way the build works, you won't ever need to use this perk as the build is naturally giving you a faster cooldown compared to using any sort of perks that focuses on these specific areas. This is what peak performance for a build that focuses on ability and weapon usage should look like. It should focus on the intertwining of two elements and being able to craft something so applicably good that it will feel powerful and fun to play with. Like most of my builds, this build can be put together by anyone, and the only thing that may be an issue to some people is getting the Elemental Worlds mod. It's a very fun build to use when you just want to go crazy on waves of enemies and not stop until everything's dead. Do be aware though, that you are at a slight disadvantage when using this in high level content, where enemies hit hard, and some enemies keep their distance away from you. If you have a machine gun or something long range like shown, then you should be fine to proceed. But if you don't, then it's best to switch up your gear a bit to have something as backup. Also, do be aware that you can run out of ammo for this build very quickly because of how fast things are going. This of course is expected when using SMGs, but when using this build, it becomes a lot more apparent than normal. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up with date with Destiny and Timeful content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.